Inside this nondescript Long Beach building, bags full of marijuana are under lock and key, not to sell, but to test. Weighing out at least two grams. So from this, I'll just start putting it into this nifty grinding container. There it goes. This is Bell Costa Labs, one of about 30 state license testing labs that have opened in this emerging industry. You can kind of tell how it starts being ground up right there. Labs which certify the purity of, in this case, recreational marijuana. This will extract all the pesticides inside of the plant. Before it can be sold to consumers, this is a sample called Thin Mint from Watsonville, California. Some things that you don't consider is that there are fats and lipids inside of cannabis. This is all extremely new. I mean, what we're seeing here is a merger of big agriculture with big pharmaceutical industry. This is something that has never been seen. It's unprecedented. It's only been since July that the states required all marijuana be tested before sale. Tests paid for by distributors. Medical marijuana was never tested. Ooh, this one had chloroform. And this is sophisticated, precise chemical analysis, which measures, for example, trace amounts of 66 different pesticides at parts per billion. If they exceed accepted limits, that batch the sample is taken from cannot be sold. The consumers need to be aware that the cannabis that they've been ingesting for all these years before testing could have tons of pesticides in them and chemicals and things that are not good for their body. So yeah. now in the legal industry, we can actually test for it. The latest report from the state shows through August of some 10,700 batches tested, about 1,900 failed. That's about 18 percent. Tough standards, which the state says are necessary for public health and which doctors like Jeff Chen strongly support. The testing standards are very strict, which is a good thing. Dr. Chen, one of the founders of UCLA's Cannabis Research Initiative, says there are three primary contaminants consumers need to be worried about. Microbials, which mean fungus or germs, heavy metals, arsenic, lead, mercury, and perhaps the biggest danger, pesticides. There's pesticides, which can be harmful in and of their own right, but now if you add heat, to it, you're now transforming them into more harmful compounds. Okay. So one commonly used pesticide is mycobutanol, it's an antifungal, and when you apply heat to it, it turns into cyanide, which is a neurotoxin, okay. and now you're inhaling it straight into your lungs. So if there's a tough testing program for cannabis, that's theoretically a good thing for consumer protection. And longtime cannabis users like this shopper welcome it. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Uh, I would prefer only to put things that are clean and healthful into my system. But the flip side is a potential disruption in the supply chain, a potential shortage of approved marijuana for retailers like Janice Hardoon, who operates LA's Koreatown Collective. Testing's impacted us because it's held up product getting to the collectives. We're having a very hard time sourcing product. Testing is keeping product from getting to the shelves. Some products are not making it through the testing regulations. But there's a twist. Seems there's always a twist. If a sample fails, the batch it comes from can be modified. Remediated is the term. Say, turned from flour, the actual plant, into oils and tested again. If that passes, the new modified batch can go through. All this good news and big business to the folks at Bell Costa. Again, only about 30 labs have been licensed in the entire state so far. Every one of them reportedly backlogged with product waiting for that pass or fail grade. Phil Schumann, Fox 11 News.